Creating a photoreal renderer in Unreal Engine can spam from a simple to a complex process, yet it fundamentally depends on lighting, camera and composition. In this video, we will simplify this process and focus on these essentials while making a still life render. Let's get started. In the Unreal Engine project browser, go to film and video and select a blank project. Make sure you have ray tracing turned on and name your project and hit create. In Unreal Engine, I'm going to create some folders to keep things organized. So one for our materials, one for our textures, one for our levels and one for our assets. So we'll go into get content, click on Quixel Bridge and search for interior window in Quixel Bridge. And we will import this modular interior asset into our project. So that's done. And then we'll go into our content drawer and add that asset into our scene, just like that. Next, we will bring in our cup asset. We'll go into our asset folder, say import two, and go to our cup asset and bring in the 3D model. Uh, everything looks good over here. So we're just gonna say import all. And now we have that asset in our scene. Um, next we will import the textures related to that asset so right click say import to again and go into textures folder and bring in all these textures next we will create our material we'll go into our material folder right click say material we'll create a material called cup and double click on it and we will bring in the textures we just imported so we'll just select all of them and drag it into our material glove. We'll try to arrange them a little bit so that it's nicely visible. We'll connect the base color to base color. We're gonna collect the ambient occlusion to ambient occlusion slot, the normals to the normal, and the metallic to metallic, and the roughness to roughness. And with that, we just have our very simple material ready. We'll click save. Next, we will go back to our asset folder and drop in our cup asset. And uh, to see some material on it, we're just gonna go back to our material folder and drag in the material we just created into the material slot. Uh, now we have some textures on it. Uh, one problem we need to fix is the, the pivot is offset right now, so we need to center it. So if you hold Alt and middle mouse button, you can just drag the pivot to the center of the asset and then right click and say pivot set as pivot offset. So Unreal Engine is gonna remember that pivot offset. Next, we're gonna create a platform for our cup. So we're gonna go into a place actor section, drop in a cube asset and scale it just like that uh, and place it against the window. Uh, next, we're gonna import a uh, material for this uh, asset. So let's say import content, Quixel bridge again and they want to type in varnish wood. Once you do that, you have this varnish wood floor material. You're just going to say add and that would be imported into our Unreal scene. Next, we can just go ahead and drag that into the material slot just like that. All right, so now we will go ahead and select our cup asset, scale that down and place it on our platform just like that and with that we are ready to start setting up our camera a lot of these kind of photos uses a nice portrait lens with a wide aperture to create these creamy depth of field shots so in unreal engine we are going to try and mimic some of these lens features we're going to drop in a cine camera actor into our scene and go to the viewport options layout and divide the layout into two parts and choose one of them as a cine camera actor next we will select the camera and change the focal length to 50 and reverse this film back settings to create our portrait orientation of the camera following the rule of thirds in which we divide an image into nine equal parts using two horizontal and two vertical lines and then Place these subjects on intersection of these points, leaving a third of the image empty. To have this guide in Unreal Engine, we're going to select our Cine camera and then click on this box over here to enable the grids. And now we can use the grid to position our 
camera in such a way that the cup is at these intersection lines, leaving a third of the image empty. To light up the scene, we're gonna first do some cleanup work and remove anything which we don't need in our scene. So we're gonna select the skylight, the sphere, the light source, atmospheric fog and we're gonna hit delete and delete all of them. Now with the blank scene, I'm gonna type in HDRI and drop in an HDRI backdrop in our scene. Another thing we need to make sure that we are using the path tracer. So if you go into view mode, you can change that to path tracing. Next, we will create a backplate for our shot. So we're gonna type in plane and bring in a plane asset and rotate that plane 90 degree and scale it up. Next, we will right click and import our BG texture. Next, we will go into our material folder and create a new material and name that BG and then double click on it and then we're gonna bring in our texture the bg texture drop it in and connect that to the base color and in the specular i'm gonna type in constant to make sure there's no specular and then we'll hit save and then we're gonna select our plane and then drag that bg material onto that plane and then just adjust our plane a little bit to make sure we have a good composition going on. We are going to adjust few more settings uh, in my camera. As you can see, a lot of the shot is still sharp. So what we need to do is we need to really blur that background. So we're going to select the camera and then lower our f-stop, which is this current aperture. So we're going to go to the lowest value, which is 1.2. And you can also adjust how low you can go. So I'm going to stick around with 1.2 right now and as soon as you do that you can see the background has gone a little bit more blurry. Following the principles of contrast in photography where you place the subject in front of a very bright or dark background to create more visually appealing image. Let's try to do something similar in our shot using camera exposure. We are going to select our cine camera actor and type in exposure in the search box and click on this metering mode and set that to manual next we will also set a, um, a post process volume into our shot so let's set post process volume in there and in the post process volume we're gonna select unbound so make sure post process volume is happening throughout our scene and then we're gonna type exposure over here as well and check metering mode and set that to manual now if we select camera search camera you can check in shutter speed and iso and now you can control the exposure of our scene using these two values now after setting the exposure as you can see our background has gone a lot darker as well so let's go into the bg texture we are using and this let's just brighten our background using these this value over here so let's just make it two or maybe three. That works. Let's hit save. And moving further, what we can do is select our HDRI backdrop, go into our skylight setting and change the skylight color to some more over more blue. A very common technique is using light blockers in photography to shape the light and give more definition to it. Let's do something similar to our image. Let's create a plane asset and arrange it so that it's just uh, on the left side of the window and we'll go into our material folder and create a new material and we'll call it cutter and then double click on it and we're gonna drag the connection from base color and then type it a constant and choose a constant 3 vector and just change the color to somewhere over dark gray and then hit OK. And now you can see when we drag the material to the plane asset, we can see it's blocking the light coming from the left side and giving the light a little bit more shape on the right side. So if you turn that off and on, you can see the effect it's having in our scene. 
Next, we'll add more details to our windows by adding a layer of dirt. So to do that, let's drag in a plain asset. Let's rotate that to 90. And I'm going to place it right where the window is. Just going to scale that. And we're going to rename that to window dirt. Let's create the material for our glass dirt. So I'm going to go into textures and bring in a dirt texture. Right click import. And I'm going to bring in this dirt 01 texture. Now we'll go into our material folder. Right click say new material. Uh, I'll call this window dirt. Double click on it and go back to our texture and I'll bring, I'll bring in that texture we just created and now let's switch the window dirt to uh, mask and now let's just connect this to our opacity mask and for the color of our dirt I'm just gonna drag this that in and then say constant vector 3 let's have it like that to make our dirt more visible I'm just gonna select the window dirt material and then type in clip and set this value to 0 0.06 let's hit save and apply it to our window dirt plane and see how it looks so we're gonna go into material I'm just gonna drag this into our material slot right now it's a little too much so let's reduce it by multiplying our opacity mass by a black constant so I'm just going to copy this node over here, change it to black or some of gray. And then I'm going to take a multiply node and multiply this texture with this black constant we just created and then plug in the result into opacity mask. And let's hit save and let's see how it looks. Maybe it's a little too less, let's uh, tweak our constant. Let's bring it to somewhere over here. Say OK. There you go, that looks better. All right, now it's time to render this still from Unreal Engine. So we're gonna click over here, say add level sequence. And I'm gonna name this still 02. And we will hit uh, right click, act to the sequence. And we're gonna add our cine camera actor in there. Next, uh, to just render one frame, we're gonna be dragging this marker over here and just add it over here so that it's just constrained to one frame. We'll go into movie render queue and let's click on this unsaved config. Um, just gonna delete this JPEG sequence tab and then create a PNG. And let's add in a path tracer. And let's see an anti alias node. Override that anti aliasing. Let's add 16 samples and I'll see how it looks. And let's save it to our directory. Let's create a folder called output and let's save it over there. We'll switch these numbers to our portrait shot. Say accept and we're gonna hit render local. All right, so once finished, we have our render. Maybe the window dirt is a little too much, but you can definitely control that. You can bring it to Lightroom or Photoshop and do additional grading on it. So if you like the video, please hit like, share and subscribe and follow for more content. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.